Yeah, Frederick Jensen and straight away. Finland are on the attack and a chance and they scored. His first touch and Finland are in front. Frederick Jensen off the bench and on the scoreboard within 20 seconds. They broke down the left-hand side. It was Taylor involved again. And he played a beautiful little ball across the six-yard box and flying in at the back post was the substitute. And Frederick Jensen scores for Finland and they lead in Dublin by a goal to nil. And that, of course, was the only goal of the game at the Viva Stadium. An underwhelming evening in front of an empty stadium. And all in all, a frustrating couple of games in Stephen Kenny's first week in charge, coupled with that one-all draw over in Bulgaria. To reflect on it all, I'm joined on the line by the former Republic of Ireland striker Kevin Doyle. Evening, Kevin. Evening, Nathan. How are you? Considering that the players had what, two, three training sessions at most, and they've all said that, essentially, fitness-wise, they're in pre-season mode. Could we have expected much more last night? No, I'm surprised people are so so surprised, to be honest. I don't right. know what you expect. It's a bit it's glorified, friendly game. I know it's the Nations League, but it's, it's nitrate them as friendly games, looking at them. Um, settling in, you know, it's, it's it was Stephen Kenny's... Um, First time under so much pressure, under so much spotlight. I think he performed very well himself. I think he handled himself well. He spoke well. I don't know what people he gave. He gave lads their debut. Um, he's trying to implement a, a different style of play. Um, and you know, everyone just getting used to being around new coaches, new manager. Yeah, we could have won the games easily, and we also could have lost. I think could have lost both of them we easily. Won both of them. Um, I think it was fine. Nothing to panic about. Nothing to get too excited about. But nothing to be too downbeat about. I think he, he needs plenty of time, patience. Um, you know, some young players coming through, and, and I'm glad he gave him a chance as well. He mm. could have easily just, you know, just you know, gone with the experienced players and not give them their their time. And I think they performed well. Connolly, I thought looked good. I think Adam Ida looked good. Um, Malumbi looked good at, at times. So, well, no, I'd be positive enough about. It. I guess the concern is that there's almost two different strands to this conversation. There's the long-term plan and the mm. evolution that Stephen Kenny wants to bring in terms of tactics and, and how we look at Irish football in a more possession-based game. And there's the short-term aspect of Slovakia in yeah. a month's time in a Euro 2020 playoff with home games to come potentially in Dublin next summer and the importance of that. And whether... Too much has been thrown at the players too early in terms of a new system and, and how uneasy a lot of the players seemed in that 4-3-3 system and, and even the strengths of the old brigade that defensively, a side that had let in, what, five goals in eight matches during the last qualifiers, suddenly looked really open. The pitch looked very, very big when Ireland lost the ball and how he can correct that in the space of probably two more training sessions. So just, so just to take it on the short term yeah. and looking at Slovakia, would there be concerns around that that actually... There's too much of a overhaul too quickly here. Um, of course, there's concerns. You know, you're talking about the back four. That would be my one, I suppose, worry. Um, you know, we've gone from a back four who are used to defending deep and are solid, and it's great to be a defender for Ireland if you're that type of defender. You sit back and you just head and clear and boot it up the pitch, and that's changed. You know, Stephen wants him pressing, pushing high up the pitch. Um, and and, that, and that, that has to be a real concern because the one thing yeah. we had was... We felt we were very good defensively, but were Ireland very strong defensively because actually all they had to do was sit back and defend? They didn't have to really think about it. Like, how many times did we say yeah. Shane Duffy with that heroic last gas yeah. performance? Now they have to think a little bit more. Well, it is. It's playing to, it was playing to our strengths in a way. You know, everyone behind the ball. And, and for a centre half who likes to head it and kick it, for in, in Shane's case, I think that's maybe doing a bit of an injustice. Mm. He struggled in the two games a little bit, but he also scored an important goal. But... He is a guy, his frame, his type of body, he needs fitness. He needs games. He hasn't had it. He hasn't had it near the end of last season with Brighton. He's gone on loan to Celtic. He'll get plenty of games. For him, he was the one who, me, to me, who looked like he needed time on the pitch. And he'll have that, hopefully, by the time we play Slovakia. He'll have plenty, plenty of games. He needs a bit of confidence. The way we play with Ireland now under Stephen Kenny, it looks like where we're going to play. He's going to be higher up the pitch. He's going to have a lot more responsibility on the ball. You know, his responsibility was last ditch tackles, headers, blocks. Now he's going to be on the ball. He saw him on the ball a lot and he looked a little bit cagey and a little bit nervous, but he has to overcome that. And he is actually good on the ball. I've played with him before, I've seen him. If he has a bit of confidence in himself and plays a few games and gets used to that role with Ireland, he's used to being the sort of superhero, block everything, you know, get everyone in behind him, helping him out. And he, he can't play like that now. And he, you know, as a, as a top player, he ha he should be able to do that. And I think he can. And John Egan seemed more comfortable. Um, but again, it's a little bit of a change back four that was strong together. But I think 
I think with games under their belt, um, with their clubs, they'll look better for it, um, and especially, especially Shane Duffy. Um, but other than that, you know, there was positives to take from it. You know, everyone's gone about our possession stats over the years, mm. and we we had plenty of that. And um, it just takes a bit of time. Um, and we've said it all along, Stephen needs time. But um, as he said, if we were to worry about the Slovakia game so much, we'd still have Mick McCarthy in charge. I know it's a massive game, but if we were thinking about short term, you'd leave Mick in charge and let him get the job done. And we have to, Stephen has to balance that. And, you know, he's come in, he's in his first game. I, you know, I, I, I don't think there was, I don't think there was as many, many negatives as maybe think, people think. Just in terms of the player's fitness and how big an impact that has. So this is in the 80s or 90s and maybe some of the expectation was because I think Stephen Kenny played it down in terms of where the player's fitness would be. The fact that Matt Doherty had been on holidays for three weeks. Yeah. That you're not coming back a stone overweight anymore. Jeff Hendrick hasn't played a game in six months before Bulgaria and he's still in unbelievable physical shape. But John Egan looked out on his feet after an hour yesterday when, the, when they cleared the yeah. ball he's almost down his hunkers just looking shattered. In terms of trying to actually think on the pitch, and I'm sure you've been in that position where you're playing games, first match of the season, and, and things aren't right, J just how big an impact does it have on a player not being 100%? Yeah, you know, it's your rhythm. You know, you need to get into a rhythm again. I know they haven't had a long time off, but they had a long break and they played a few games near the end of the season um, and they're back again a few weeks off. It just gets you out of your rhythm. Um, especially, you know, I always felt big centre-halves, which we have, uh, take longer to get fit. I know... That mightn't be his case as much as it was in the past, but they're, they're big frames, big bodies, their feet, they need to work on their movement and their feet and their, their touch. I just think they need a bit more than maybe a, a Matt Doherty or a Seamus Coleman or you know guys in midfield or front who are lighter on their feet and they're more naturally better movement and fitness anyway. So um, that'll come for those two lads. And again, they've played for Ireland, as I said, I'm repeating myself, but they've played a different way for Ireland. Centre half mm. for Ireland were always you know, our best players, because of the way we played, in a sense, as well, block everything, be a sort of, you know, a superhero at the back, and, and, and you didn't have to worry about too much about the football side of things. And and they have to think a bit more now. Um, that'll take a few games, I hope. Um, you know, as I said, they play for their clubs, and they play for their clubs around the ball plenty of times. Uh, Shane Duffy didn't play for Brighton near the end of the season, and that would have taken its toll on his body as well. Uh, he doesn't have match fitness. He didn't have it from the end of last season to bring into, you know, only three weeks off. He couldn't bring it into this season if he didn't have it from last season. So he will play plenty of times for Celtic, and he'll get confidence playing for Celtic. They'll be winning games, and he'll be on the ball a lot more and a lot more used to being in possession, um, which he's going to have to be if he's going to be playing and, and starting for Ireland. Um, fitness is key for him. Recovery runs high up the pitch. Ireland are pressing now. It looks like they're going to be pressing higher up the pitch, mm. which I'm delighted with. Um, but that puts a bigger onus on centre half turning, quick feet, getting back, recovering. Full backs, Matt Doherty had to probably stay a bit further back than he would have liked because he has to stay back when, when, when the centre halves and, and everyone's pushed so high, they have to have protection and cover. And he would have been curtailed attacking wise because of that. He would have been held back to, to help cover his centre halves. But that's, listen, something that he'll have to get used to too. He's a £15 million pound player now. He's playing for a top club. He, he should be able to adjust to different ways. Jose Mourinho will have him tucking in and. and been more defensive minded than he was at Wolves that's for certain so um, again he'll be he'll be better for that in, in, a, in a couple of months as well In both matches even though the performance in Bulgaria was, was better but in both games when Ireland lost the ball even deep inside the opposition half they looked really vulnerable on the counter attack and, and Kenny Cunningham mm. was on this morning saying that he doesn't get the correlation between having a high line and more expansive football and how one means that one is at risk that even if you play a high line it's how you react when you lose the ball and that you need to turn as you say turn your body quicker and get back quicker is that something that can be fixed quite quickly or do you actually Ireland need to change things for the next month and maybe not press quite as high not commit as many men as far forward yeah in a massive game against Slovakia he mightn't be as committed in these you know treating these ones as a learning curve he he was letting them you know see how it goes he'll watch these game back and, and take I'm sure um, learn stuff from that as well and maybe realise maybe I can't have Shane Duffy and, and John Egan press quite as high in such a high line and, and they'll learn from that and um, the management will learn from that they might say listen lads drop an extra five yards there we don't need to be quite as high little little details that make a big difference mm. and again I go back to their maybe centre half lack of fitness and and again not used to playing like that for Ireland um, but uh, it does we are I know you're saying Kenny said that one thing doesn't lead to another. I, I think it does. When you are pressing higher and you're winning the ball higher up the pitch, it means you're, you're, 
you're leaving more space behind more you know players are further up the pitch you don't your center half don't have that cover that insurance yeah. of a midfielder sitting in front of them so it does lead to the other thing but you have to get the balance right if we're to be a more attacking team have more the ball we have to you know commit players forward win the ball higher up the pitch um be more attack and threat and it will lead to us maybe being open more defensively but we have good defenders who should be um, when they're 100 percent fit, should be able to deal with it. I hope. I hope they will be able to. Um, I really like Shane Duffy. I think he's a very good defender, but I just felt he was lacking half a yard, which is a lot to him. You know, big guy like him, half a yard makes a big difference. Um, the difference maybe between uh, one of those goals going in and out. He was at fault for one of those goals, I think. And then on a better day, when he'd be fully fit, that wouldn't have happened. And pressing high up the pitch as well. I guess that's where the energy and the fitness comes into it. It's not just about the back four, it'd be unfair to compare what Ireland may do with what Liverpool do, but Liverpool are the team probably with the highest press almost in European football right into the opposition half and an awful lot comes on to the front three and the energy of the midfield of that when you do lose the ball that you don't give the opposition team time to actually pick out a pass that they're under so much pressure, all they can do is hoof it forward. Did you see signs of a high press there? Did you see enough signs that Ireland are going to be able, when everyone is fit, to put enough pressure on opposition centre-backs so they, they can't just stroll through the middle quite as easily? Yeah, I think I think over the years it would have suited us a lot more to have that high press. We had so many players with so much energy. I was I was desperate. I hated every game. You know, it's understandable against the likes of Spain where you sit back and you can't press them too high because they will pick you up. But majority of international teams, you can press them high up if you're organised enough. And that's one... To, to, to be organised and do a high press everyone has to be on the same page the players really need to know what each one is doing you can't have one going off on a tangent um, and that's a case of training two or three days together he wouldn't have been able to organise that as well as he's liked I'm sure but we do have young fresh legs with plenty of energy in them who can do that job and you know you can. It's you don't need massive skill to press high you just need to be organised and when you do win the ball back high up the pitch it saves us an awful lot of trouble because we don't have the most creative midfield in the world to break teams down with fantastic passes or whatever it might be so if we can win the ball high up the pitch it solves a little bit of a problem for ourselves um you know it's a lot easier to score a goal if you're winning it in the opposition's final third so um listen i think it's a, it'll suit us once we get it bedded down and everyone knows their role and job and um we don't panic into thinking right this didn't go our way i don't think mm. Stephen will he's he's quite level-headed and, and uh, seems to come across after the games like he was very happy with things, uh, you know, and, and and carry this on, and everyone can be on the same page for for a number of months instead of you know going right that didn't work and we throw everything out and we we go back to um, what we've done over the years. I think it suits us. I hope we stick at it, and I think long term we get we get uh, a lot of joy out of it. He won't have to take all the blame if things don't go right over the next few months. The old line of we don't have the players is being trotted out once again, and you would have heard that a lot during the latter stages of your Ireland career, that the players simply aren't there. Would you have any questions around that, particularly in midfield, where over the two games he tried six different players? It's hard to think of one of them who really put their hand up saying, you know what, I've got to start yeah. next month. Would you have any concerns from what you've seen of if he wants to stick with this 4-3-3 formation, that maybe right now Ireland don't have the skill set in midfield to play that, that style? No, I think it's crap that... We don't have the players. It's such an easy thing to say. Our own managers have been saying it the last few years um, when things don't go their way. Um, I think that's just the easy answer. Did Finland have the players the other night? Did mm. Bulgaria? What, what's the difference between any of our players? Most of our players, the majority are either playing the Premier League or top championship clubs. Um, we have the players. They mightn't be playing for Man United or they mightn't be playing for... Man City, but the majority of them are playing at high level, as high level as any team in, in Europe, apart from the Spains and the Italys and the Germanys. And we, we never had, you know, Spain, Italy and Germany type top world class players. Robbie Keane the last year, Damien Duff, we had the odd one. But in the majority of cases, we're as good as any international team. You know, 90% of the international teams, as I said, Slovakia, who have they got that's any different to us? So that's that's an easy one to pull out. Um, uh, I don't agree with all. A well-organised international team Majority of your players playing the top division should be able to go out and play well and win games. Um, you know, if you don't have any superstars, either do most international teams, to be honest with you. So, um, no, that's an easy one to, to throw out there and I don't agree with. It, it's funny how you get a different sense maybe at times when you're at the game. I, I thought Harry Arter brought a lot of energy to Ireland and yeah, uh, a lot of leadership as well was the one guy in the last 20 minutes really trying to drive them on. 
and you come home and you're looking online and he's getting slated. And at times I felt actually Robbie Brady was maybe trying a bit too hard. And you'll know Robbie Brady and, geez, there's not many players yeah. who want to pull on the jersey more than, than Brady. And there was that time he took the ball off Arthur in the middle of midfield when he probably should have let Arthur drive on and pick up a better position and Brady plays it straight out of play and Robbie Brady gets man of the match. In terms of wanting, what, what do you think he wants in that midfield then for next month? Do you want the energy of an Arthur and a Brady, or do you want the craft of a of a James McCarthy? Or is that actually maybe your perfect midfield of three of them? Yeah. Maybe the three of them. I don't know if James has fantastic... You know, James, to me, is more of a, a, a breaker-upper and win-the-ball-backer than, than a craft. You know, none of them really stand out as massive crafters. Um, they're more energy and work rate. And, win. and I think in that, in that role, that we that's what we need, more energy on the ball. People say we need passage, we need people to break teams down. Well, if we're playing a high press and we're winning the ball high up the pitch, maybe we don't need as as fantastic a um, ball playing midfielders as other teams. Uh, you know, it's all how Stephen sees it. But for me, you know, there's not much between any of those, to be honest with you. They're, none of them top, top class, um, I suppose, at trading a true ball through and setting people up. But they're all very good at work rate, very good enthusiasm decent enough on the ball and will win the ball back so you could pick any of them I thought Malumbi was quite good when he played actually um, I don't know if he'll you know, throw him into the deep end in, in the game against uh, Slovakia but um, Harry Archer I thought was full of energy I'm delighted to see him back it could have been so easy for him to you know, I suppose retire from international football and move on and nothing mm. would have been said about it but he sticks around and he's, he's a good good player and we need him and um, I thought he was impressive enough in, in the game yeah what about the front three then, uh, all of whom had moments, but again, goals are a huge issue. I put it to Stephen yeah. Kenny yesterday. Shane Duffy is the only Irish player to score more than one goal over the last three seasons. Aaron Connolly had his chances, didn't look fully confident. Adam Eda had a different role, had his back to goal a lot, and Callum O'Dowda had moments, and then you have um, McGoldrick and Robinson coming on and, and adding a little bit of energy. Would you be concerned about where the goals are going to come from and the inexperience that a lot of those players have at, at international level, that everything else is sorted, if we get things right defensively, that the problems were there under Mick McCarthy where it was, what, seven goals yeah. in eight qualifying matches, that, that that's going to be a huge issue over the next couple of years. Who is going to score the goals? Yeah, one of them have to, you know come forward and do it. Aaron Connolly, you know, excites me most times I see him play. I think he's got the ability to score goals. He's got quick feet and looks a really good finisher. Um, hopefully he'll get some games between now and, and Slovakia with his club. Um, he's the one for me that stands out. I thought Ida was decent at holding up and he, in that role as a nine, holding up back to play, he brought people into it. I thought for him, he had a fairly respectable couple of games. Um, you know, you could trust him with the ball, whether he's going to get you a lot of goals, I don't know. But Connolly, to me, would be the one that would stand out that might be going forward in the future. Um, we had Shane Long on the bench, didn't really get used. He's I said, our top goal scorer. Mm. Probably everyone else has added up. We'd add to Shane's. Maybe he'll play for Southampton between now and, and, um, and score some goals between now and the playoff, and he'll you know be the one to pick. So um, I think our, our, the way we play will help us get more goals than we did, say, under Mick McCarthy and under Martin, I think, as I said, going back to it again, but we'll be higher up the pitch and hopefully things will fall away. And we had some chances the other day. If we'd have taken them, we would have, you know, they got a couple of goals in those games. There was chances. It wasn't like we went through the games we were getting a shot, a shot off, and it was times we could have scored. So, um, yeah, I'd be confident in creating chances. And, you know, those players getting games, you know, will we'll either play between now and then, will Aaron Connolly play? Will Shane Long play? McGoldrick probably will play, but he's not, you know, prolific for him, mm. very good at the role he does. So, um, you know, it's a lot, lot to happen between now and then. Uh, five, six weeks um, with their clubs. Hopefully, to get game time, can get a bit of confidence. And um, you know, it's not about just them scoring goals, but chances, chances been created for Ireland um, has been very slim over the last few years. So, um, hopefully, this slight change in style will will create more chances and won't be relying on a set piece in the last minute like we did the other night and like we've done over the years a lot of times um, hopefully it won't come down to that and that's out of Stephen Kenny's hands in terms of what the players do over the next month that was put to Kenny Cunningham and Gary Breen as well this morning about what if a lot of these players don't play can you select them if they haven't played and and the two lads didn't think that would be an issue because they'll have another month of pre-season training but in terms of, I don't know how often you turned up at Ireland camp without having had, say, the three, four games in the month beforehand and, and how big a difference it makes in terms of sharpness. Like, should Stephen Kenny, when the players come in, should he be picking players who've been playing first-team football or, again, should he stick to what he has in his head about what his best 11 actually is, regardless of what happens at club level? 
Well, listen, if they don't play any games between now and then, he'll have to go with whoever has, you know, especially if they played a few games, scored some goals. Um, it's, it's, I, thankfully, during my career, there wasn't too many times where I wasn't playing for my club and, and came into international game with, with plenty of fitness and, I suppose, uh, minutes under my belt. There's been plenty of times for Ireland, though, you know, people have come in and excelled and haven't been playing for their club. So, um, you could look at both ways, but you, the majority of the time, you want to be playing for your club and full of confidence. And you could see a scenario where none of those lads do play. Um, you know, they're all, you know, borderline whether they get games for their club or not. You know, Shane just Shane Long has been a sub on and off for something for the last couple of years. Um, McGoldrick is getting older and didn't mm. play as many and had some niggles last year. It's it's going to be it's going to be tough for all of them to get game time, but any of them can play. I would say Stephen would have confidence in any of those. So you'd imagine a couple of them would have had enough minutes and, and won't be relying on training training, uh, training to keep them fit that they'll have got some games and hopefully a couple of goals. A bit of confidence makes so much difference to your, your mood and your form coming into a squad. Uh, you know, you see lads who are playing well and they arrive and they're bubbly and they lift everyone. So, you know, a bit of luck goes away. We get a couple of those like that. Stephen Kelly was clear yesterday and all week that he's not wedded to one system, that if he feels that a 3-5-2 is a better formation, that he won't be afraid to go there. When you look at the skill set, again, watching yesterday, and even watching the way Finland played with that system and how Timo Puki would drop deep and he'd drag a centre half with him and he'd pick up these pockets of space and, and they were able to have a nice flow. It's very similar to what Dave McGoldrick, McGoldrick does with Sheffield United. When you look at the way Ireland played with this four at the back, do you think actually maybe a 3-5-2 with Coleman in defence, with Doherty in that more attacking um, role, that, that it solves an awful lot of the problems that are there? Yeah, Even as I a short it, term for the next month? It, it, it probably does, but I would have liked to have done it in these two games then, you mm. know, to to have a couple of those under the belt. Uh, I, I think he's gone with this now, and that's what he, he sh probably will stick with and probably should with, should now. They've played a couple of games. This was sort of their, their chance to do that. Um, change, the, change it already, you know, does that show, you know, in the player's mind, Jesus, he really, you know, he didn't fancy that, and, you know, and he's... he's half panicking thinking you know uh we need to try something else already that didn't work out so um i think that's the formation he's done consistently with the 21s and at club level 433 and and I, I think he should stick with it now and i think we do have the players to do it um and i've already spoke about why it probably didn't work out as well as as it could have but again i go back to the coaches were new it's damien duff's first time involved as a you know senior international coach Stephen himself, you know, with all the interviews and everything he had to do, you know, that's totally, you know, a new chapter in his career. That was probably the biggest game of his life, the last two games. Um, so, you know, all that into account, I think he handled it well. And, and um, you know, I think he should stick with what he what he started now. Um, they were fine. As I said, they could have won those games. And we're everyone's looking for this, that and the other. And, you know, the people, some people are wanting to write him off straight away and everyone, others are saying give him the next four years, whatever. I think you just, somewhere in the middle ground, it's fine, don't panic. You know, give him, give him plenty of time and let him work with these players. And if we lose this, you know, it's terrible, obviously, if we lose that Slovakia game, but it's not the end of the world either. Um, he wasn't brought in to bring us, to get us through to the Euros. That wasn't his job. It was to build for the future. And I hope if things don't go his way in the next month or two, that all of a sudden everything gets thrown out as a again and everyone wants something different and, and it will be the case everyone will be calling for this that and the other but I hope there's some sound heads that's, what, that's what's great about Irish the, football it's the, it's yeah, the battle for the soul of Irish football we've got to be it's, over here and over there there's, there's no yeah, in between it's it, all extremes it is it's always is and it's whoever isn't picked in the squad or whoever isn't picked in the team is the talking point rather than the team we'll always find Seamus Coleman's never been more popular yeah I know I know uh, it's mad isn't it but that's just the way it is and that's the sort of thing that you know Yes, the, the manager has to deal with and see through all that. Mm. And um, you know, that, that's I hope he's well. He seems to be to me anyway to be well able to to look through that and and um, hopefully think. You know, I don't think, think long term is so important to get to that Euros for umpteen reasons. But um, you know, we, he's here to build mm. build for Ireland to change a style of play that everyone wanted to see. You know, Mick uh, Mick Mick was there to do a job for. 18 months to get us to Euros and he didn't quite get to finish that job but I wouldn't you know I wouldn't blame him for the way he played or the teams he picked he just had to get it done and he he nearly did and whether he would or not is another, another matter but Stephen's here now and we need to give him time not panic you have two I can't believe two games in and 
the different comments that I read and see already and, and how well, uh, me and you here talking about and questioning this, that and the other. Um, we have three hours to fill sports. every night, Kevin. This is yeah, not the attitude true, we true. need. You needed to be coming <laughs> yeah. on here and you needed to be making your mind up after two matches. Yeah. You're never you going to make it up as you, a you you're never going to make it as a pundit sitting on the fence like this. That's the last time I'll be on after uh, <laughs> after Stephen Kenny. Um, yeah, but it's, it is, isn't it? It's, it's that's just life, and you, mm. you, everyone has an instant opinion, and you want you want you want to squirt in those games and win three or four nil and, and be fantastic. But it doesn't work like that. And do the players he, do the players recognise that? Because a lot has been made in advance of Stephen Kenny's yeah. lack of experience with players at this level and that the first few sessions were really important that he laid down a mark and that they respected him do you think actually though the players would realize we're not fully at it here either so we couldn't yeah. have expected a huge amount more yeah i think so and you saw that in their interviews i thought shane duffy was very honest in his interviews and he took a lot of responsibility afterwards i don't think the players will have had one problem with stephen kenny um and he's brought his good coaches around listen he's I don't think it'll be an issue that way at all. Um, they all will have known of him. Um, he's been under for any one measure, but it's not like he's coming out of blue. It was plenty of media about Stephen doing really well over the last few years. Um, they will have all read that and seen what he can do. And he, he's, you know, he's he's very good at dealing with, you know, professional sports people. He knows what he's doing. I don't think there's no superstars in that squad that are, you know, going to be going around, you know, you know, undermining them or anything like that. He's he will have been. He'll be the boss. And um, I don't think from what I read or what I hear over the years, his trainings are very. There's no, there's no reason not to buy into what he says or does. Um, and he's he was the outstanding candidate for the job anyway. Who else? Who else was? Uh, you know, mm. you know, who else was going to get? Who else Big was Sam. looking like Big they Sam. deserved it? So, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's. There's um th th this is the future and I just hope we give a give it a, a good go which I mightn't work out of course it might it might be a disaster in a year's time and you'll be having me on here and saying it didn't work out but I mm. think it's the right thing to to do and to try to and I hope it does and I think I think it will but who knows fair and balanced analysis from yeah. Kevin Doyle yeah no good to anyone is it <laughs> <laughs> Kevin great stuff thanks a lot for that no worries Nathan thanks for having me.